Hi, this is Ron, WA7GIL. Today I'd like to show you how I repaired this little uh, QCX Mini from QRP Labs. This is a 17 meter version that someone built and was having a little trouble with, so uh, here we go. I'm working on this uh, QRP Labs QCX Mini built for 17 meters. I did a lot of voltage checks. I found that uh, voltage around, voltages around IC5 are good. Uh, IC7 is good. IC6, however, shows good up to right here, about two and a half volts roughly. Suddenly the output on pin one is at 8.7 and pin two is trying to look like 2.4 but not quite getting there, about 3.8. So this higher DC level is passing through. Uh, IC8 is showing five volts all the way around. And both halves, as is IC9. After that, uh, IC9A section here is properly biased. It should be around four to five volts, and it is. And then IC10 looks good at six volts all the way around on both sections. I went ahead and checked all the resistance values, all the connections, everything. Everything is as it should be on this device, so I have to now suspect the device. So I'll show how to replace it. IC6 is located right here by the Pots. It's a little tight in there, but it should work all right. I, li I like to use a uh, this called a uh, SMD removal alloy. It's a very low temperature melting point solder. Uh, it uh, the, the concept is you melt some on the leads. I put a little bit of liquid flux on there first, and you uh, let it pile up, and then you just reheat and reheat. It holds the heat for quite a while, and if it's hot enough to melt the solder, it'll stay that hot long enough for you to just uh, grab the part and take it off. And then it's just a matter of cleaning the board. So let's give this a try. does make a mess, well, but it's easily cleaned up. Okay, the part is off. And I'm going to clean this up and get rid of all the excess solder. It's bridged all over the place, but it's okay. I'll use uh, a solder wick and a little bit more of the uh, liquid uh, flux. The idea is to put that down on there and heat it good and suck up that solder or that, that alloy. And it comes away pretty easily. I'm going to go ahead and finish it using that concept and I'll show you how it, how it comes out. And there it is all cleaned up, ready for the new part to come in. Right there. I cleaned the flux off with a little uh, Q-tip and a little bit of alcohol. Okay, I had to do a little bit off camera because it's just too tedious to show, but uh, I placed the part here. I held it down with this dental pick and I tack soldered that first pin there. Straighten it out a little bit and tack soldered this pin right here. Now it's time to solder it. I've got a little bit of flux on there. Should be able to just tack these down. I have to be very careful right here. R244 is very, very close to pins uh, five and six here. But I will do that. Very difficult on camera, so I'll just do this and show you. But uh, I mean after fact, but I use a very fine tip soldering iron and the finest solder I can find, and a little bit of flux. I try to do each pin without shorting them. If I do short them, it's not a problem. The, the uh, solder wick and a little bit of flux will take that back off. So I'll show you where we're done here. By the way, this is just a reminder to me if I had power plugged in, there's no visual display of any kind saying it's on. And one time I made a mistake of uh, going in with a grounded soldering iron to do something and forgetting to turn off the power on uh, on an old classic QCX. And I had a little bit more work to do after that, all the smoke came out of that one. Okay. Okay, the uh, 
part is soldered in and I like to use a USB microscope to get a good view of it. Make sure I don't have any shorts. You can see a few pretty big solder joints there, but it was uh, done by hand, so it's what it looks like. I checked the voltages. Everything looks really good. So we're ready to test this thing. I turned off the backlight so you could actually see this uh, screen. I'm in the bandpass filter alignment mode now. And uh, oops. here we go. In my own way here. But you can see the scale changing over there. Eight, eight. With the peak on the eight range is about the best we can ever get on one of these. And so it looks pretty good. Whoops, down, up, down, up, eight. Yep, peaked. Now we switch to IQ balance, and I see a problem. No matter where I set the volume control, I'm at zero. So this is an issue a lot of people see where they get good uh, adjustment of bandpass filter and nothing on the IQ and the low and high. I don't even have to test it to know that it's not working either. All that implies is this interruption in the audio path somewhere uh, between about IC8 uh, and IC10 somewhere. So we'll take a look at that next. Well, it turns out in my exuberance to pull that old chip out, uh, I managed to splash some of the uh, uh, removal uh, alloy over onto IC10, which uh, <laughs> didn't do it any good, didn't hurt anything, just uh, caused it not to uh, operate and some voltages were wrong. I just used some of my uh, solder wick and, and quickly got that off I'm testing again here. Now on IQ balance, we're, we're capable of uh, setting volume above zero. And I'll start the tune-up procedure. So just start rotating this. Sometimes if you don't get IQ balance change, they're starting to go up. If you don't get a decent change in IQ balance, you can uh, sometimes start one of the next uh, one of the next ones here. So let's go to low phase. These all interact anyway. some high first or next that one's going up so let's bring it down getting some really good dip here I think that's the key find the one that'll dip first and then go back and do the rest. Sometimes it's hard to see that you're accomplishing anything on this adjustment, but here we go. So that's a pretty good minimum to start with. Now we'll go back to the low. Yeah, we're getting good, good, good nulling now on this one too. And just for fun here, I'll go back to the IQ balance and some good change so there's looks like I might have, might have had it okay good IQ balance bring it up a little bit of volume on this 
get it, get it up into higher range. Do the low. That's the dip. And do the high. And these do interact a little bit, but whoop, need the more range again. Looks like that's working, so we'll go from there. Well, that uh, took care of it, so uh, thanks for watching. That, that completed the repair of this QCX Mini 17 meter. Thank you very much. This is Ron, WA7GIL.